Harry Potter, and Draco Malfoy. A teenager that got absolutely famous because of a tattoo on his face, and the other doesn't have a tattoo, but is rich thanks to his sugar daddy. For most of the time, Potter stands tall to his enemy, but there is that one time, that Malfoy gets to cast an amazing spell on Potter. This scene was so amazing, that they decided to bring it onto the chessboard. And the rules are unfortunately not very simple. Pieces, not pawns, turn to stone when they capture. Kings cannot capture. Stones cannot be captured. Pawns can go sideways. Captures give points, earn more points to win. And now for the part that everyone loves the most, the disclaimer. Petrified Chess is one of the not very popular chess variants available on chess.com, and unlike the majority, the rules are not very welcoming for new players as there are too many new things to take in at once. With that said, this is my first ever Petrified Chess game, no experience so far. Please watch this video with your own risk of getting triggered. And it would be nice if I get someone with the same starting elo. And I did. E4. And for those of you wondering why my elo is 1524 instead of the normal 1500, this is actually my second game, because the first game I won after three moves due to my opponent's disconnection, so I decided to record another one instead. E5. Pawns should be extremely strong in this mode, not only because they can move horizontally, but any pieces that capture a pawn will get petrified immediately and can never move anymore, and a pawn is only worth one point. Therefore, I will make good use of them. Push them all baby. Bishop c5. b4. Ha! Normally it blunders a pawn, but here, it petrifies the bishop back. Bishop d4. Aha! Normally this should have been a very bad situation, and even though knight c3 works, he can capture my knight and win 3 points without me being able to take back a stone. But guess what? Pawn to b2. Ha! Surprise motherfucker. Dude he is so shocked that he cannot make a move anymore. Finally. d3. Solidifying my center. Knight f6. Aha. He's putting pressure on my well defended e pawn. Therefore. I'm not defending it anymore. Bishop b6. c5. Bishop c7. I didn't understand what c6 was for, but maybe he played it because he saw all of this would happen in the future. Bishop g5. This wins 3 points for free, and I will take it as soon as he attacks my bishop. He did. Bishop takes f6. 3 points for taking a horsey, and my bishop is a stone now, so he cannot recapture. d5. The French move. Aha. So my pawn is all alive and well as the rules suggested, but instead of just vanishing into thin air like normal, his pawn decided to just turn into stone. Bishop b6. I'll give a check. He sacrificed a bishop c4. Man this guy is being destroyed by my pawns. c5. I'll take. Bishop a5 check. b4 blocking the check would have been fine, but think about it, my rook worth 5 points, which is actually a lot, so I don't really want him to take my rook in any circumstances. Therefore, I'll turn him into stone myself. So for some reason my score just went from 5 to 10, which means that bishop is worth 5 points instead of the normal 3, maybe the pointing system is different from what I understand. Knight c6. Ha! You think that square is safe? Think again. Knight d4. Aha! He is obviously planning to give a check, and if I take his horsey, I'm then petrifying my own woman, and even though knight a3 can defend the threat pretty easily, I prefer to do it. The fancy way. These pawns are so annoying. Resignation. Petrified chess, 200% win rate.